Now another thing that, that throws me off is like, you know, all modern controllers have two shoulder buttons. Uh -huh. But, um, like, okay, the first first controllers to, to, the first mainstream controllers to have that were the PlayStation ones. And they were called L1, L2, R1, R2. Uh -huh. But then you go to Microsoft, it's like L, B, R, T for like bumper and trigger. And I guess that makes sense. That makes sense to me. That's but, not confusing. And then you go to Nintendo and it's like L and LZ, R and RZ. And it's like, I just wish they would all use one standard naming convention. I don't think that's so bad. They're still using L and R. Right. So, you know, left and right. And that's not so bad. Just... Whatever arbitrary second part they want to use it doesn't really bother me. I guess, but it is confusing. And then, like, PlayStation will call clicking the control stick, like, L3 and R3, but then Xbox will just call it, like, clicking the control stick. Just a little... I, I don't know. It, it should be more organized. You know what bothers me about the Switch hmm. now? There's, like, no D-pad. Yeah, it's just, like, four buttons. Yeah, and, like, and how I, are you supposed to do anything precise if it's all free-floating you can press then, them all the and same time? And then if time. you have to use the Joy-Con in, in, like, by itself, yeah, then you have no no D-pad at all. Like, no right. buttons at all. You're so stuck with the control you're, stick. You're stuck with the little, the little joystick part. And I'm very bad with those. Yeah, and, and for most precision games, you... That those are really hard to use, like yeah. especially for like puzzle games. If you're gonna try to play Puyo Puyo with a control stick, that's gonna be horrible. Yeah, I mean I've been playing it that way, and like you, you get a little better at it, but it, it helps that Puyo Puyo like shows you where the piece is gonna fall, right. so you can like if you if you stop looking at the actual pieces and just look at the the ground where yeah. they're going, then you're not as bad off. But you're more likely to make a mistake and send things the wrong direction suddenly if you're just like. If you're not used to using right. that. I just hate it. I don't mind the size of the Joy-Con by itself. Right. It's, it, I've got little hands, so it doesn't bother me. But I hate not having a D-pad. Like, yeah. I need the D-pad to live. And yeah, it's I, rough. I, um, I can use the, I guess it's the Pro Controller. Yeah, that's yeah. that's nice that they have that. And I don't hate I don't hate that controller, but the, the, the Joy-Con controller and, like, the whole thing when you put it all together, right. like... And and then I don't like how the buttons are so low on one side. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's so it's weird. It's and hard to touch the control. And, and I mean, it's cool that it ships with you know the controllers necessary for two people, and it's cool that you could just have it as a handheld suddenly switch into a two-person thing. But the, the the sacrifices they made for that are kind of brutal, you know. I I mean I I guess you're able to get more of the pro controllers though. Yeah, you if, are if you really need to. Which is alright. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, I've heard good things about the Pro Controller, except I've heard the D-pad's a little iffy sometimes. I haven't had any problems with it, but I haven't played very many things. I mean, I've just been playing Puyo with it. <laughs> right. And I guess for um, that, I mean, it should be fine. If you're able to play a puzzle game with a D-pad, then... So there's two important things that you need to be able to do with it for it to be a good D-pad. You have to be able to do good puzzle games, you have to be able to do good fighting games. Those both require precision. So if you can do either of those with a D-pad, it's a good D-pad. I don't, do they have any fighting games for Switch? <laughs> um, Street Fighter 2 is coming out. Like the one you had in your Super Nintendo. Oh, that was Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Ooh. Yeah, this is... I forget which one it is. It's like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Final Edition or some nonsense. <laughs> it's like it it's has... like at the, the convenience store how they name cigarettes. Like <laughs> There's like, uh, like ul ultra lights yeah. and, and like... Menthol Ultra Light. Super Street Fighter 2 Ultra Light. Menthol. Menthol Turbo Dax <laughs> Pro. Now, this one has two new characters Billy you, and Jane. Billy and Man. No, you have, you have Evil Ryu. Wow. And you have Violent Ken. I was trying to remember the characters that were in Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So it was uh, Blanca. Yes. Uh, M. Bison was in it. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Dalson. Yes, he's in there. Uh, I guess Ken. Yep, he's there. And Ryu. Mm -hmm. Chun Li. Uh, what's his name? What's his e Honda. Like? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, who's the USSR guy? Um, Zangief. Zangief. I like him because his ending, the former president of the USSR, comes down and you do that that kicking dance with him. <laughs> I never. Like actually played the game like all the way like like right. the the story mode. Yeah, and I never it, got through that. Right. Well, I was little. Like well, and to, to be fair, the story mode of 
you know, a fighting game isn't the main focus. I was like eight. Well, the uh, like back then, did, could you unlock characters through the story mode? Or, no, or it was just, just have everything? It, it was just there for the purpose of playing single player. Oh, you okay. started with everything. All right, yeah, that, those were good days. <laughs> those were. I guess it's kind of cool to be able to unlock characters. So it's certainly better to be able to unlock characters through the game than to have to buy them. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm Buying so, is horseshit. I fucking hate DLC having to buy characters. Like like uh, they did that with the new Smash. Yeah. Like having to buy characters is stupid. It, it was really cool like with the old Smash where yeah, you would you, unlock characters and be like, random. see that. I got new characters. Like it was fun because you like, never you knew how to do it. You didn't you, even know what you were gonna get. Right. Like, it was all surprise. You it know, was this, cool. Especially like around during the time of melee. I'm. I mean, I used the internet to some extent, so I knew who was in there. But when I was doing like you know uh, Smash Brothers on the N64, I wasn't really using the internet. I didn't know who was in there. It was cool to find those characters. Yeah, it's too bad they don't do that kind of thing anymore. Yeah, and it, it's impossible to keep things a secret now because people will just data mine everything and figure out everything in the game the moment it comes out. Which is a shame. And it's like, oh. And like, instead of being able to be like, hey guys, look, I, I unlocked this guy. It's just like, hey look, I paid five dollars for this yeah, guy. Yeah, it's like, hell with that. Like, they're, they're doing that new Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Mm -hmm. And like, from the get-go, from the very first trailer, it's like, pre-order now and unlock, you know, Sigma Zero or whatever. It's an exclusive character and they're already announced, yeah. you know, character packs and all that horse shit. And nope. I hate exclusive crap. It's so dumb. I am very unlikely to ever get hold of anything exclusive. Yeah, me too, because it's just... annoying. It's annoying. I'm mad. I'm mad all the time right now just because mm. Nintendo keeps pulling this shit with, like... Yeah, they've started hey, doing it. Hey, uh, you know, we made this really cool thing that everybody's going to want, but you're only allowed to buy it for, like, a month. Exactly. And, uh... <laughs> All of eBay is gonna buy it first. <laughs> yeah, like th that whole NES Classic thing was a mess. Like they were still tons of people who wanted they're it when it was discontinued. It they, they are. They're going to do it again. The SNES Classic is not going to have a good stock. They're, they're obviously doing it again. That's what they want. It is. It's really dumb because they're not getting that money. <laughs> no. They're 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 doing eBay people a favor though. And like some people say, oh, it's production. It's hard to produce. No, it's artificial scarcity. They did yeah, this with definitely. the amiibos. They, they, yeah. But then, they, then they like undid it with most of the amiibos because now, now there are like a few exclusives, but most of them are still like you can buy them. Yeah. You know what Fuck. I mean? They, they make some exclusives for certain stores or whatever, right. but like amiibos in general aren't hard to find. Yeah. They used to be. Like there are a lot of them you can get now just going down to the store, but. For a while, there was only like ten of them, and you couldn't find them anywhere. You could. People were standing in line for them. Yeah, I don't know why. Now, but they now were. that's only the case with a few exclusives, which yeah. is nice of them to have done that, like to stop pulling that bullshit. It, but exclusives are really annoying. Yeah, it's especially when they're you know timed, or it's like you like, pre-order the game from this store, you get this. You pre-order it from this store, you get this. Okay, what if I want both? Of them? Yeah, too bad. <laughs> Oh fuck! It, well, I, I guess there are people who do that. Like you, you there what you are. do, you you pre-order both, and then you sell the copy of the one that you don't need. You know, I probably on eBay. That's true. It's not a bad. It's an eBay method. economy right now. It it kind of confuses me when, when like they'll release like you know a new uh, a, a, a new model of a console. And then people will go out of their way to get it, even though they already have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I get it. Like, if you if it's like lighter or something, like it's you know a smaller DS or it has like a bigger screen. Oh. But when it's like just a regular like you know TV console and it's got a new color and you want it anyway, I really don't get that. People are collectors. They just like having things. Like yeah. it's just about having it. Oh, it's something so expensive. I can't justify people that. People, that you're not a collector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you would collect is like Power Ranger toys. <laughs> I mean, personally, I would love like a Nintendo Switch Mini, like that's cheaper than this one. And it doesn't have the you know removable controllers and shit, and maybe like it doesn't support the dock. I don't know how you could get that much minier than what it already is. It's pretty small. I guess, but uh, make it's, it more. It's, it's very portable. It is, but I guess I mean make it like 3DS size. It's not just for the sake of it being cheaper. You know, get rid of some of the more expensive features like the wireless controllers. Just give and it stuff. some time; it'll get cheaper. It will. I know it will. I just. It's gonna be like a hundred dollars or something in like and, a year. And, I, and <laughs> I'm trying to pull out because I want it because I want to play Zelda on the go. But it's. I mean, you can wait a while. I'm, I'm gonna have to. Like, wait until they have more stuff to do on it. Like right now, there's like four games you can yeah, play. It's true.
follow me on Twitter, you stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs>